I've been saying for a while now, I feel like the chessboard has just been thrown up. We've got fertile ground now. We don't know what's gonna grow of it. I think there's, you know, the, the traditional labels of left-right are, are becoming meaningless. What really is a Republican in the age of Trump, which is a sort of a different thing than conservatism, all of that. Do you think that the next wave of politics is really gonna be about the realignment of I all hope of this so. stuff? I hope so. Um, I do, I know, I know you've been talking about this a lot on your show, you know, this, this split uh, between authoritarianism and whatever you want to call it, libertarianism, yeah. small l, broadly conceived, right? Right. Um, that's what I hope Do to we see. need a better word for that? Because I think, because I do believe that's what it is, that it's authoritarianism versus libertarianism. But I think when you say libertarianism, people think of it as some sort of mm -hmm. offshoot, strange political party. Is there, is there a better phrase there? Yeah, I mean, so for that, instance, I have many differences with libertarians, so people often lump me in with them. And, mm -hmm. and, but ask a libertarian. I mean, ask like a hardcore <laughs> libertarian about Thaddeus Russell, they'll tell you, oh, he's not a libertarian. Uh, I have many differences with them, although in some things I very much agree. But mm -hmm. they're... They, they're um, hostility to or opposition to the state and mm -hmm. state power. Uh, I'm completely with them on that. I think markets are very responsive to consumers' needs and I think they advance humanity in many, many ways. I don't think they're perfect. I don't think capitalism is perfect and that's one of their problems. But anyway, I do think that general idea, that basic idea that we should be free from control by others, those in authority, in particular those with state power, which mm -hmm. is the monopoly on violence, right? Um, is a good thing. So I, I, I love that about them, and I love that about this sort of new formation I see happening, and you're a part of that, and some of your guests are a part of that, versus Democrats and Republicans who do want to control us, mm -hmm. right? Liberals and conservatives who do want to control us in various ways. I would like to see a new realignment around that. I would like to see us talk about politics in those terms, because right and left, I think you're right, no longer make, make much sense unless you're very specific about what you mean by them. Right, so we've talked a little bit more about the left so far, and you know my feelings. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying, as, as a liberal, I'm trying to clean up what, what the left is, and I, at this point, I don't think that being a liberal and being on the left are even compatible, unfortunately. <laughs> but let's talk about the right a little bit. Right, what is right authoritarianism right now? Right-wing authoritarianism is sort of what we know. I mean, it's using the state to control people's personal lives. Uh, and so, you know, it's, they don't want women to choose, to be able to choose abortions. They don't want us to, uh, actually, they're very concerned about popular culture, so they want to control what we watch and, and listen to. You know, they don't like a lot of Hollywood. They don't like a lot of what happens in the music industry. They've held marches and protests and called for laws to censor those things. Uh, and they also want to control what happens in the rest of the world in various ways. They want to send out the United States Army to control how people think and behave. Now, the thing is that lately, and I think, again, this is where, where you've been going a lot with your show, is that there's been a convergence between the conservatives, the Republicans, and the liberals, the Democrats, on, mm -hmm. on many of these questions. So, for instance, hip hop, here we go, popular culture. If you look at the reaction to hip hop over the last 20 years, the negative reactions, the calls to censor it, mm -hmm. it was Tipper Gore. It was a lot of feminists and it was Christian conservatives mm -hmm. joining together. Al Sharpton was another one who yeah. held marches against hip hop, you know, calling for music companies to shut down these, these artists and censor the lyrics. So there's a lot of convergence around this authoritarianism. Yeah. So. Where does Trump fit into that? Then? Yeah. Because he doesn't care about video game violence or words that are in rap songs or even abortion I don't think he particularly cares about, certainly not about gay marriage. So those things that are thought of as right authoritarianism, all these people that are marching with hashtag resist, are, are they sort of missing the boat on who they should be attacking on this? It would have been a great thing if he had had more than two or three people in the world who agreed with him. <laughs> We're in Washington, D.C. Yeah. on these things, right? <laughs> so unfortunately, he brought just his tiny little crew to Washington and had to fill all these posts, you know, all these jobs. Mm -hmm. And the only people available, unfortunately, were Christian conservatives and generals, mm -hmm. right? And so what we have is, and Mike Pence, right? So Mike Pence comes from the Christian conservatives, right. conservative wing, and they've got their, you know, their hold on him. Sessions, I think, is another one, right? The, who actually thinks that uh, marijuana is dangerous to people. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. The guy is an absolute Neanderthal on this stuff. I do think that he's not going to be successful because I think that that war has been won by us, mm -hmm. you know? But, um, but it's, it's, it's unfortunate that Trump, I think he feels beholden to them. He can't hold any power without the Christian conservative base. And so he's not being 
really forceful in his um, championing of popular culture, which he comes right out of. Right. You know, I, I mean, mean, look he, at who he is. is. He's the he's the yeah. the zenith of it. Yeah, right? and his wife is a model, and you know all the rest of it. I mean, that's. So, yeah, so Trump, and that's one of the reasons I think that he makes people crazy. In fact, I actually think that's the main reason he makes both sides, liberals and conservatives, absolutely lose their stuff, which is that <laughs> he is, that he breaks those rules, cultural rules. So if you look at, if you look at Puritanism, right, what I was talking about, the work ethic, what does Donald Trump do? Hmm, he got a bunch of money from his dad and he kind of lives large on his private jets. Everything is in, you know, everything is covered in gold. And what, who does that other than Donald Trump? Rappers. Yeah. If you think about this, right? He does a lot of the stuff that, you know, the bad black people have done. They celebrate their bodies and they don't care about, you know, conventional rules and norms and bourgeois morality and all that stuff. And, um, you know, he's, he's not shy about talking about sex. That's also something you can't do. That's an mm -hmm. absolute taboo. He breaks all those cultural rules. I actually think that's why they go crazy about Donald Trump in a bad way. Because basically they don't know how to fight it because they're constrained by sort of other rules, right? It's, it's so fundamental to who they are and their, what their world is. When we walk around in America, generally speaking, we don't talk about sex. We just don't. Mm -hmm. It's this silence that we impose on ourselves. We all are proud of when we work hard, even if we don't make a nickel for it, right? Mm -hmm. It is so central to who we are. We've internalized it. It's not like people walk around saying, oh, I'm a Puritan, and here's what the Puritans <laughs> think. It's just it's completely deeply embedded inside of us since the Puritans got here. And that's what Trump just seems to not, seems to be oblivious to sort of the, that fundamental American culture. And I would say it's really a middle class culture. Mm -hmm. So. Working class people of all colors have, generally speaking, and immigrants too, have kind of avoided that stuff. They haven't internalized it, of course, because they're sort of outside of the, the, the realm of power and they're outside of citizenship, right? Mm -hmm. And so for whatever reason, I don't know why, Trump is much more like them, even though he's always been a rich kid. He sort of adopted that kind of working class indifference to bourgeois morality. And it, people can't stand that. What does that tell you about politics sort of between the ideas and just the cult of personality. Yeah. You know, as someone that you obviously care about ideas, you have a command of the yeah. ideas, you were born out of certain ideas that you later challenge and have sort of incorporated into what you do now. But basically everything you said is just, this is just cult of personality of what he's done. There's a, there's a fundamental, very depressing problem that I'm sort of just coming to grips with or coming to terms with now in my own life, which is that, and I've sort of known this all along, but it's really hitting me hard, is that even with the internet, even though I think people are better informed now than ever before because of that, the vast, vast, vast majority of Americans don't know anything about politics. <laughs> so You've obviously been spending time on Twitter. This is a problem no matter what your politics are yeah. as a public political person or a public intellectual. You know, people don't even like that word. And, right. and it, all it means is you're a lover of ideas, that you're curious about big ideas and you talk about ideas. That's it. You know, yeah. people don't even like it when you use that. Yeah. You it's, smug son of a bitch. I know. Oh. I, smug is the word I've been called recently, um, <laughs> more than once. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a problem. I mean for what we do, right? Yeah. It's you know, we so that's why we uh, those of us in this little world talk to each other most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because yeah. most Americans have never heard of Syria, much less know anything about it, you know? Uh most Americans I mean, the, look at the polls. It's just most Americans, I think, don't know who the vice president is. It's something like that. I mean, they could they can't identify Washington DC on a map. You know, huge portions of the American pu public don't know Anything. Is, is that just a function of our success? That we are a, a, a perhaps the most successful nation in the history of mm -hmm. the world. Uh, we have done tremendous amounts of good. We've done plenty of bad at the same time. We've brought in more people from every walk of life. All of these things, we've created this system that basically still is pretty great. And what you get out of that after the sausage is you get sort of a dumbed down thing because people have video games and have leisure and sports and all of those things. Yeah, so I think those are good things though. I mean, I think sports- yeah, No, I, I yeah, agree, yeah. I think this is, yeah. it's pretty great. Now it doesn't mean there aren't problems and I wish more people cared about ideas and all that, but that it's just the function of success is yeah. some of this. Yeah, you don't need to care. 
about stuff. You don't need to think. You don't need to read Foucault. <laughs> you can spout all you want about what he thinks, but you don't need to read him. Right. Because no one does. So there's no one's ever checks you on it, right? Um, but that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, it's like I often say to people like you and me, it's like, well, are we sure we want to be doing this? <laughs> Wouldn't we have a better time and a better life if we were just following sports instead? You know, yeah. I love sports. I, it's uh, funny. I, I had Jason Whitlock from Fox Sports yeah. 1 on a couple weeks ago, and he was so, you know, clearly passionate and knows his thoughts and all that stuff about politics and the wider world. And then when he left, I was like, man, that guy gets to talk about sports all day. I, I was like, that would be pretty great if I was an NBA analyst. No, but, I know. But we do love this. That's the... That's the I don't know. I'm, I mean, aren't we conflicted? Well, I can't speak it? for myself. Well, I, I love it. I, well, you do, but you're also yeah. tortured by it. Yeah, it's exhausting when when, yeah. when articles and publications call me an alt-right extremist. Or, yeah. You know, and then I have to go, well, now do I want to spend my day fighting this or just letting it be? Or, but it all, it's fighting. That's what it is, right? And so half the time I love the fight and half the time I hate it. I don't know what else to say. I mean, I don't know what else I could do. I mean, I would love to be like a boxing coach instead, but yeah. I, I don't think I can. And um, I'd like to be in the NBA. Right. Probably not. You, so you know, you know, Jews used to dominate basketball. I know. In this country. Oh, so you do I'm know this. Poor. I know, I know. Yeah. There were a lot of Jews in the early days of the NBA. Yeah. Now, uh, it's dominated. Too it's too late for me. Dominated. 40 with a bad So knee. you could bring that back, you know. Now that I think there are no Jews in the NBA, <laughs> you could be the first. <laughs> and not one Jew, that's pretty sad. I've heard that Jordan Farmar is half Jewish. Yeah, is he still in the league though? That's about it. He made, <laughs> they got him out. They, yeah, they, pushed, yeah. they found out about his half. Yeah, I think they actually <laughs> sent him to Israel, but all right, there was a total sidebar. <laughs> but wait, I want to focus a little more on that, yeah. on that right authoritarian yeah, yeah. thing. Uh, because it isn't the part of the authoritarian stuff that I focus on a lot. So I, mm -hmm. I do want to spend a little more time there. Okay. It do, it, part of it doesn't make sense to me. Like, it seems to me that on something like gay marriage, if the, if the right that supposedly believes in states' rights and in the individual mm -hmm. and in local limited government and all of those things, they had such an easy opportunity to do the right thing with gay marriage. Now, of course, it got screwed up because of the Christian conservatives. But even right now with marijuana, as you're talking about with Jeff Sessions, it's like, you guys are the ones that are supposed to care about limited government and not having the government tell people what they can do in their own home. Mm -hmm. Why are they unable to take a principled position here? Um, it, well, I don't know about being, okay. Well, I think <laughs> for me- did, did I lead too much in no, that? No, 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 no. I think that conservative or Republican authoritarianism is different in a very important way, and it's the reason that I, like you, focus much more on left authoritarianism, which is that they are dumber. <laughs> no, really, they are less effective at getting authoritarian politics out there and distributed and, and bought into. Hmm. The Sessions, this is what I was saying about Sessions, right? Good luck, buddy, like convincing America to roll back legalization of pot. It ain't gonna happen, right? right? Um, you're certainly not going to convince anyone of this stuff. I mean, no one, no one believes, other than Jeff Sessions, really, that pot is harmful to you in the ways he's talking about. Um, but they, then what does that say, that, that even President Obama yeah. was still having the feds shut down That's local my, things like here in California? That is my point. That is exactly what I'm saying here. So that Sessions won't be able to do it. Obama could because everybody loved Obama, because Obama played by all the rules, because he was the perfect American man and he was black. And so he, he kind of fixed our, our bad history for us too. He made us feel better. He was our salvation. He was, he was perfect. He was almost a Jesus figure. And, that's real, and I mean that, people really did treat him that way. And I don't think that's an exaggeration if you look at it, right? Um, and so he could send in the feds to shut down marijuana dispensaries and no one batted an eye, yeah. certainly why, on the left. But why did he? Oh, why did well, he? Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying on the why yeah. he can get away with it. But why do you think he did if most likely he doesn't really care about marijuana laws? Do you, do you think? I don't know. I, I yeah. would say that he, like, like people in the progressive left, and I include liberals in this, um, are interested primarily in social control. So they need, and that's not, doesn't, that's not saying that they're evil. That's mm. just who they are. They like a well-ordered society. So I don't know, but I would suspect, and look at Obama, he's like the paragon of discipline, right? He is actually the perfect Puritan, at least as far as we know, mm -hmm. right? Um, I would say that's part of it, that he didn't like the fact that people were violating federal law. And I think getting high, I think he now sees as, as disruptive, right? It's not a good thing. Um, so look at his sermons, here you go, sermons or lectures or speeches, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> Interesting choice of words. Against black culture which people sort of don't pay attention to, but he gave many, every time the guy got in front of a black audience, 
he would start lecturing them about watching too much ESPN and about how they needed to pull up their pants and how much how they needed to work harder and raise their children right and stop eating Popeye's chicken. Google it. I mean, he went and Michelle did the same thing. Mm. This really stern admonitions of of black culture. So I think that's all of a piece. I, I think that's probably plays into why he did go after the dispensaries. Yeah. God, there, there's a lot there. So where we, st where we started <laughs> yeah. before we went on this 20 minute mm -hmm. uh, roundabout was I was mentioning the, the, you know, the outcasts, sort of the, the, the drunks and all those people. And then I said it was sort of like some of the people that were in your house growing up. Mm -hmm. And you were making a distinction that mm -hmm. those are not the same thing. So let's, Thank let's you. go back to that. That was good. Thank I you. had it there. I, I, I knew was, we were going to get there. That was very good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah. So the, the communists in my house growing up were puritanical. Because as I said earlier, you know, uh, communists and socialists have always been puritanical. Again, this is lots of literature has been written on this. This is not just me talking. Um, Lenin and Marx were opposed, well, sorry, Lenin and Trotsky were opposed to homosexuality, not because homosexuality was sort of bad in itself, but because it was decadent. So decadence was the problem for communists throughout the 20th century. Mm -hmm. They thought like Adorno did later, that it was this thing that was leading the working class, the decadence, popular culture, consumerism, was leading the working class astray. What the working class should be doing instead was organizing themselves for revolution. Now here's what they understood, and this is why it's all logical. Uh, they understood that when you control or manage a whole society, which is what they wanted everyone to do, that requires tremendous discipline. Mm -hmm. You can't be going to the movies right. if you're gonna be managing the economy. Right? <laughs> and so that's what they said. I mean, this was their, this was their argument. We yeah. need to instill this perfect proletarian discipline, was the phrase, in the Soviet Union and elsewhere. And so my parents' comrades came out of that tradition. They were Trotskyists, you know, they came out of that and they understood that. So they may have watched some television, but they didn't, they thought at best it was just an escape, right? And what we really need to be doing is studying GDP figures. Right, and so, so that we can manage the economy. Everyone should be doing that. Right. Everyone should be Ooh. an engineer and everyone should be ready to have meetings all day long and all night long to organize our society. So it's so interesting because I, I don't, as, as you're saying that, I was thinking that recently I've been saying this thing about how comedy, I think, is dying right now too. Mm. That there aren't comics willing to cross the line. We've got Bill Maher apologizing for a word even though no one in their right mind thinks he's racist. We've seen so many leftist, progressive, comedians just making the same Trump jokes over again and not really pushing the limits of what comedy is. But with what you're saying, it really does make sense why they almost can't be funny. This is what I've been saying, that these progressives who are shutting down pop culture in these ways are true to their heritage. This is what progressives, I mean the progressives, the original ones of the early 20th century did. They shut down the Nickelodeons. They did. They, in every city in the country, progressives launched these campaigns. When you say, can you just tell people what Nickelodeons are? Oh, sorry. Because a lot of people, my younger audience is gonna think you mean the, with the green goo, sorry. but that's not what you mean. Yeah, the, the Nickelodeon uh, network is named after the cinemas, in the, which started in the Lower East Side of New York, but grew and spread all over the country which were uh, five cent cinemas. You could go and put a nickel in and you could watch a movie. Yeah, although so, I'm sure they were probably gonna go after the green goo <coughs> at some point too, because there's gotta be some racial connotation to that. Or, or <laughs> yeah. <something>. yeah. <clears throat> so the progressives in all the big cities shut down those Nickelodeons because the working class was watching burlesque, you know, or, you know, just, or things that weren't about work and, you know, discipline and, and war. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's, it, they're being true to the heritage. Yeah, we should have culture that is completely austere, right, and, and not, fun or funny in those ways. That's why the left is so unfunny, right? Think about it. I mean, yeah. they're so earnest, they're so earnest that they can't make a joke. Well, that's the thing. They've been birthed <clears throat> Pepe and Keck yeah. and Kekistan and all of it. They birthed it because it's these people online that have just had it with the political correctness. So now they're sending out <clears throat> frogs with swastikas mm -hmm. just to get a reaction out of people. Yeah. And I, people then think it's hate speech, which I of had, course has been. <clears throat> I had Gavin McInnes on my show mm -hmm. and you know, it became very clear to me about five minutes in that this is what's happening. He's hilarious. Much of what he says is either racist or pretty damn close. Mm -hmm. And the content of what he's saying, I have a lot of trouble with. I don't know how serious he is about it, but it's, it's clearly right wing in, in pretty bad ways, mm -hmm. according to my politics. 
but he's really, really funny. He has the freedom to do that. Comedy requires freedom. Jim Goad is another one. You know, he, <laughs> he just approached me, he wants to be on my podcast, and, he, but he, and I started looking at his writing. Much of what he says is probably racist, probably sexist, probably homophobic, but he's hilarious. He's very, very funny. So what do you do? Yeah, what do, in other so words, what, well, I want to ask you that. What do you do with that? You personally, <clears throat> what do you do with that when you're sitting across from someone like that? Right, I don't know. I laugh yeah. <laughs> and I'm troubled. And I feel like if they are not, however, I feel like if they, like with Gavin McInnes, he has no real power, right? I mean, no one's going to listen to him and write some policy based on this. <laughs> um, you know, you could say he contributes to the Trump phenomenon, but what's the Trump phenomenon? I mean, there is no Trump phenomenon anymore. The generals have taken over, basically, you know. Um, um, yeah, once they attach themselves to any movement that might seize state power, oh, <laughs> then give me an AK-47. Right. But they, these guys are so marginalized. People talk about being marginalized. The marginalized are those guys and what they represent. It's so interesting you say that because that's the other reason that I focus on the left is not just because I come from it, but also because I see that's where all the power is seated. The conversation is seated there. Hollywood is seated there. Sure. All of those things. So when they get, you know, the, the three white supremacists to show up at a meeting somewhere, and then of course the media blows it out of proportion as if there's Nazis ramp, you know, rampaging through the streets, it's like you're, you just need that, mm -hmm. you need that belief. Do, yeah. do you think that's a fair Oh, critique? absolutely. Oh yeah, no, 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 yeah. I mean, so they control most of the media. It's just true, okay? Uh, liberals, liberals mostly, not really socialists, but yeah. liberals control the media for the most part, other than Fox News and Fox. That's, well, by the way, if you've ever been in the Fox News green room, you'll know that there's a lot of liberals who even work there, yeah. right? Oh, the people behind the scenes, there's tons. I knew gay people that work there yeah. and, and all sorts oh, of yeah. New York City, Upper West Side. Oh yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and they control academia. And they control what's now being called the deep state, whatever, you know, if that's uh, yeah, that's fair. A whole, that's a whole other topic. Whatever, but you know, in terms of the civil servants, right, yeah. who work in Washington, D.C., and work in all the state capitals, it's over, we know this, is overwhelmingly liberal. So, yeah, th this is why I get upset, because yeah. they control the world that I operate in. They determine my fate in many ways.